everybody, I'm Tim, and you probably want to buy a new EFM lens for your camera, but before you press that buy button, stop. Because in 2021 and going forward, buying an EFM lens might not be the best solution, except for one that I'll mention at the end of this video. So let's start with why. The last EFM lens released by Canon was in 2018, back where it conveniently introduced to the world its new RF mount. Ever since, there were a lot of new RF lenses, but no new EFM lenses, and I'm specifically talking about Canon because Canon represents the EFM mount system. Also, the upgrades to its EFM camera systems were very minor, like the last Canon M50 Mark II. Pretty much a Canon M50 with just a little boost. These are of course all speculations, because Canon hasn't said anything about this matter, but in my opinion, they have an opportunity to do what Sony did for example with its E-mount, a single mounting system for APS-C and full frame cameras. The RF mount can be a great clean slate because Canon so far had EF and EFS lenses. It would probably reduce manufacturing costs, make it much easier to stay in the ecosystem of the RF mount and it will make it easy for us consumers, prosumers or professionals. Of course, it would also mean that in the near future we might see a new APS-C camera with an RF mount and that would surely symbolize the death of the EFM system. So, if you can't buy or I'm not recommending you to buy an EFM lens, what can you buy that will be future proof for you? Unsurprisingly the next best mounting system is EF because Canon created an adapter from EFM mounts to EF mounts and that's kinda like Canon telling us, hey, if you have an EFM mounting system it's cool but you can also use EF lenses. But I wouldn't use that specific adapter just because I think it's really pricey, just plastic and some metallic pins. Instead go for the much cheaper Viltrux adapter, I had no issues using it, focusing or having the connection of the lens to the camera, so just go with the cheaper option. Also I would recommend getting a speed booster of Viltrux, specifically the Mark II, because it takes the crop factor of 1.6 and puts it down to 1.1, almost full frame line. And I have a Canon M50, so when I shoot in 4K I have a 2.51 crop factor, which is just absurd. And that Viltrux speed booster takes it down all the way to 1.71, almost like the 1.6 we have on the Full HD. So just get the speed booster and the adapter by Viltrux, and let's go down to what kind of lenses can you adapt to this EF mounting system. When you're buying a lens you should also think about the future because a lens usually outlives your camera. All the lenses I compiled in this list hopefully will go on to live and be used on your next camera. But before I reveal the list and what lenses I think are most suitable, if you like the video so far give it the old thumbs up so more people will not waste money on EFM lenses when they might die in the near future. So give it that like button, it really helps the channel as well. Let's start with the first lens, the EF24-105 L lens, Mark 1. The F4 might seem like the biggest drawback of this lens, but you quickly forget about it once you pair it with the speed booster, getting an F2.8. The focal length ranges are also amazing, all the way from 24 to 105 in a single lens. It's an L lens by Canon, so it's also stabilized and the build quality is good. Except for one thing that I find pretty finicky and that's the barrel zoom. If you just place it on the table and you're zoomed, then the barrel will just go in. Which, it's kinda weird, but it's there. And I'll recommend getting the Mark 1 over the Mark 2, just because the changes and the upgrades are not significant. And you can buy the Mark 1, especially because it's pretty old for around 300 bucks, which is the price I bought it for which is an amazing price for such a good sharp lens. The next lens is the Sigma Art 18-35 f1.8. I personally regret not buying this lens because I was really afraid of the used lens market, which the previous lens kinda solved since I bought it from a reputable store here where I live in Israel. But this lens is a lens everybody heard about, it's not stabilized, it's super sharp, and when paired with the speed booster, I think it goes down to f1.2. It also completes the focal length that you have under 24 that the previous lens doesn't have. An 18 to 35, a great focal length. But you should read the reviews online because I don't have this lens, but I really regret not buying it. Instead, I bought the Sigma 17 to 50 mm EX DCOS HSM. That's a mouthful. Thank you, Sigma. But in any case, I bought this lens for $400 brand new. This lens has stabilization, 
The focal length is a bit bigger than the Sigma Art 17 to 50 millimeters. It's at f2.8, which becomes even better when you pair it with a speed booster, giving you an f2. That's amazing. And the only grab I have with it is the focusing motor, which I hear all the time. The microphone doesn't seem to pick it up. Here, let's see if you can pick it up. If you don't hear anything after the editing I applied to this sound, that it means that the focusing motor is pretty silent, but I can hear it and it's just a bit annoying. I'm not sure if I would get the Sigma R today after having this lens, just because of the stabilization, but I still think that the Sigma R is great, so it's up to you. The 17-50 also shares the same filter size as the 24-105, which means that when I'm shooting, when I switch the lenses, I also switched the black mist filter without needing any step up rings. Although you'll need one just for the Sigma Art because it's at 72, which is not really bad, it still saves you a lot of weight in your gear bag. My latest short film dysphoria was shot on three lenses. The third one I'll get in a minute, but the other two, the two I used the most, were the 17 to 50 by Sigma and the 24 to 105 by Canon. These two lenses alone give you a great variety of focal length from 17 all the way to 105 with a pretty fast aperture of f2 or f2.8. Of course they're supposed to be paired with an adapter or a speed booster and the fact that the Canon 50 crops differently for full HD and 4K gives me a wide variety of shots and a wide variety of ways I can film myself. This shot for example is using the 17 to 50 with a speed booster which also gives you a full frame like view of 19 mm 18.7 to be exact. The third lens I used is a lens that most people recommend but I didn't really find useful and that's the Nifty 50, the Canon EF50 f1.8. Pretty much everybody recommends the Nifty 50 and I would too except I don't really use it. The fast aperture of f1.8 is really great especially when it goes down to f1.2 when used with the speed booster. But because I have the two other zoom lenses I don't really find a whole lot of usage for it. I mean bokeh is great, don't get me wrong, but I think it needs to be used in moderation. I only used it for this scene and this scene alone where I wanted to show the pills. I wanted bokeh all around so we can just focus on the pills. And this is mostly the usage I have for this lens for now, so I haven't used it a whole lot. I would recommend buying this one second hand as well, you might get it for a whole lot cheaper than $100. So if you can, just get it used and that's it. All the lenses mentioned in this video are APS-C camera lenses, except for the 50 and the 24 to 105, which are full frame. This video is intended to be more of an inspiration instead of a recipe to copy, because I believe you need to look at the broader future of your gear and before you buy a lens. Ask yourself, is this lens going to live on the camera I'll buy or upgrade to in the future? As for me, I believe in a micro four thirds system be it a GH6 which comes out in the future, or a GH5, or the Blackmagic products which are currently an EF mount or a Micro Four Thirds mount. As for you, ask yourself what is the best route for you, and if it's a full frame route, be it an RF camera in the future, you can get an EF lens that is full frame, be it the 24 to 105, the 50, or there's also other lenses which I'm not really familiar with. But Ask yourself that question before you buy a lens today, it will save you hassle, money and time in the future. As for EFM lenses, I'll recommend just one, and that's the EFM 22mm f2. This is the first ever lens I bought, except for the 15-45 to that came with my Canon M50 that I hardly ever used. The price point of $250, the best aperture of f2, and the focal length of 22mm translating to 35mm in full frame, make it a great photography lens and I used it mostly for my street photography pictures. It's just great. But the real con of it is the lightweightness of it and the fact it doesn't have image stabilization. It's as if you don't even have a lens or your camera. You also have for 20 bucks more or 30 the Viltrox EFM f1.4 23mm lens but it's much bigger and much bulkier so ask yourself if you want to sacrifice the weight for filmmaking or if you want it just for the photography where the EFM 22mm just shines. That brings us to the joke of the day. Why do talented snipers also excel at portrait photography? 
You'll find the answer to this joke down in the comments below. So if you like this video and you like this joke, press that like button and write down in the comments also a joke of your own because the person that's seen this video all the way to the end will realize and understand the joke and the person that has not, well, he'll be the joke. That will be funny. Thank you for watching. To join a great community of people who like jokes, storytelling and filmmaking, make sure to subscribe up here. Here you can also see three reasons to get a sound recorder that are not sound. Super interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Go out there and buy a lens, but think about the future. Goodbye.